The L-118 light gun is a 105 mm towed howitzer. It was originally produced for the British Army in the 1970s and has been widely exported since, including to the United States, where a modified version is known as the M-119 howitzer. History Topic Development From 1961 until the mid 1970s, the British Army used the 105 mm pack howitzer L5 with L10 ordnance OTO Malara Mod 56 as its light artillery weapon, variously replacing the 75 mm howitzer, 4.2 inch mortar, and 25 pounder gun in some eight regular artillery regiments. It fires the USM-1 type ammunition, called 105mm How, in the UK. The Mod 56, a widely used howitzer, was originally designed in Italy for the mountain artillery units. It is light enough to be lifted by Westland Wessex helicopters or towed by Land Rovers. It could also be dismantled into several separate pieces, none heavier than 128 kg, to be transported by mules or horses. However, it lacked range making it potentially vulnerable to counter-battery fire, was not notably robust, had poor sights and was not entirely popular nor was its rate of fire and time to prepare for opening fire satisfactory. In 1965, a general staff requirement was approved for a new 105mm weapon system because the pack howitzer lacked range and lethality. Key characteristics included 6,400 mil 360 degrees traverse by one soldier, maximum weight of 3,500 pounds 1,600 kilograms, dimension limits imposed by internal carriage in new Chinook helicopters and Andover transport aircraft, and the ability to fire immediately after being underwater for 30 minutes. The ammunition to be used was the 105mm FDMK-2 ammunition used in the L-13 ordnance of the gun equipment 105mm L-109 better known as the Abbott self-propelled gun. This ammunition uses electrical instead of percussion primers and is an entirely different design from the USM-1 type ammunition as used in the L-5 pack howitzer. The two types are not interchangeable. An early requirement was for the new weapon to use 105 mm FDMK-1 ammunition, which uses the M1 shell, in training. However, in 1968, this was changed to allow a different version of the weapon, which subsequently became the L-119, to fire US-1935 pattern ammunition. The new gun, soon designated light gun, was designed by the Government Royal Armament Research and Development Establishment RARDE, Fort Halstead, Kent. Prototypes were tested in 1968. However, it soon emerged that some increase in weight was needed for a gun with the requisite robustness, and several assemblies were substantially redesigned. Original production, which was authorized in late 1975, was by Royal Ordnance Factory, ROF Nottingham, which has since been incorporated into Bay Systems Land and Armaments. 
Deliveries started in 1976. In British service The light gun entered service with the British Army in 1976. The new weapon was heavier than its predecessor, but new and more capable helicopters such as the Puma and Western Sea King, which could carry the new weapon, were entering service at the same time. A new vehicle, the Land Rover 101 Forward Control, Land Rover, one ton, was designed as the prime mover in the field for the light gun and the Rapier air defense missile launcher. Since the end of the 1990s, the British Army has used Pinsgauer ATVs as their gun tractors. In Arctic service, and elsewhere, the gun is towed by the Haglund's BV-206 and is fitted with skis when over snow. In 1982, the light gun saw use in the Falklands War. Five batteries 30 guns were deployed to the Falkland Islands. During the final phases of the battles around Port Stanley, these guns were firing up to 400 rounds per gun a day, mostly at charge super, the most powerful propellant charge for which they were designed. They were a significant factor in the British victory. Since then, British forces have used the light gun in combat in the Balkans, Sierra Leone, Iraq and Afghanistan. At present, the British Army has four light gun regiments, 3rd Regiment Royal Horse Artillery, 4th Regiment Royal Artillery, 7th Parachute Regiment Royal Horse Artillery, and 29 Commando Regiment Royal Artillery. Other regiments are temporarily equipped with it for service in Afghanistan. The 14 training Regiment Royal Artillery uses it for training at the Royal School of Artillery. Three regiments of the Army Reserve, the Honorable Artillery Company HAC 103 Lancastrian Artillery Volunteers wrecked. RA and 105 wrecked. RA are also equipped with the light gun, those university officer training corps with gun troops train with the L-118. On 30 November 2001, an L-118 light gun replaced a 25-pounder as the one o'clock gun in Edinburgh Castle. By tradition, this fires every day at one o'clock, except on Sundays, Good Friday and Christmas Day. The light gun is also fired by 14 training Regiment Royal Artillery on Remembrance Sunday and Armistice Day each year. As of July 2017, there were 126 L-118 light guns in service with the British Army. Topic Design The L-118 uses the L-19 ordnance on the L-17 carriage. The L-19 ordnance is slightly shorter than the L-13 used by the Abbott and hence has a slightly shorter maximum range. Also, unlike the Abbott, the barrel is autofretaged and hence lighter. The light gun appears to owe a number of its features to the QF 25 pounder, unsurprisingly, since RARDE was the successor to the design department, Woolwich Arsenal. Among these features are its vertically sliding block breech, and a box trail instead of a split trail. A traversing platform is normally used with it. 
Its comparatively light weight is also attributed to the nature of the steel used in the carriage and ordnance, and other weight-reducing features, including its narrow wheelbase. The narrow wheelbase prevents the ordnance rotating the 3,200 mil 180 degrees required to unfold the gun. Because of this, the gun features a knock-off hub on one side allowing the ordnance to be rotated by removing one wheel. With a well-trained gun crew, this contributes approximately 30 seconds to the time required to deploy the gun. In British service, rotating the barrel for towing is optional. When being towed in the unfolded position, the A-frame is fitted to the front transom in order to support the elevating mass. A recent modification makes it possible to keep the gun in this position indefinitely at speeds up to 40 miles per hour, 64 kilometers per hour. For long distance transport or traversing rough terrain, the barrel is reversed and clamped to the end of the trail. For storage, the gun is in the unfolded position with the barrel elevated to an angle that balances the elevated mass on the yoke and therefore relieves pressure on the elevating gears. When first introduced in the British Royal Artillery, the L7 or L7A1 dial sight and its carrier, incorporating an integral elevation scale and internal lighting powered by Trilux nuclear light sources, was used to aim the gun for indirect fire. The L7 sight is a modified version of a German lights instrument. Since the light gun entered service after the introduction of field artillery computer equipment face, it never, unlike the Abbott, had gun rules large slide rule-like instruments used at each gun to convert range in meters to tangent elevation in mils, taking account of muzzle velocity. Therefore, it has a single quadrant elevation scale. These optical indirect fire sights are now only used in recruit training. The guns also have a direct fire telescope and were originally issued with a night telescope using image intensification. Topic: <laughs> Ammunition. <laughs> The 105 mm FDMK2 ammunition has two propelling cartridges and a blank cartridge for saluting purposes. The normal cartridge has six propellant increments, charges 1, 2, 3 and 4 plus 4 and a half and 5 increments. Charge 4 and a half, which is charge 5 with the blue charge 3 bag removed, is peculiar to the light gun and is used only for high angle fire. A separate, charge super cartridge is used for firing to maximum range. Both charge 5 and charge super project beyond the end of the metal cartridge case. Unlike the M1 ammunition, which is semi-fixed and loaded as a complete round, 105 mm FD is separate, the shell is loaded and rammed by hand, then the cartridge is loaded. By the time the L118 entered service, propellant subzones A and B originally used with the Abbott had been replaced by an aerodynamic spoiler a ring slipped over the nose of shell to lodge on the agive to reduce the minimum range at high angle fire when this was required. The 105 mm FDMK2 projectiles were the same as used with Abbott when the L118 was first introduced. The ammunition types originally or subsequently in UK service include 
L31 high explosive he filled with 2.5 kg 5.5 pounds of RDX TNT Conventional impact L-32, L-85 and L-106, L-27 CVT and L-33 mechanical time fuzzes were originally used and some are still available. The L-116 multi-role fuse is available for operations but is due to be replaced by a new multi-function fuse L-166. L-45 smoke base ejection. This contains three canisters filled with hexachloroethane, which are ejected from the base of the shell in flight by a mechanical L92 or electronic time fuse L132 being replaced by L163. On falling to the ground, they generate dense white smoke for 60 seconds. Target marker these generate dense orange L38 or red L37 cloud, produced by a mixture of PETN He and colored dye, bursting in the air or on impact, and are used to designate targets e.g. for air strikes. L43 illuminating provides a parachute flare base ejected by time fuse L81 at about 400 meters above the ground and burns for 30 seconds. L42 high explosive squash head. Used for direct fire against armored targets or buildings, has a base fuse with tracer. L41 prac inert practice shell used in training instead of HESH. L50 HE. This new HE shell is slightly longer than the older shells, uses 2.9 kg of ROWANEX insensitive plastic bonded explosive and provides significantly greater lethality, which the supplier claims is equivalent to the 155 mm HE M107. L-52 contains four canisters filled with red phosphorus smoke. L-54 black light illumination, using the same configuration as L-43, to assist observation through night viewing devices. L-83 drill an inert shell for non-firing training purposes, a white phosphorus smoke shell has never been adopted by the UK for L-118. A base bleed insensitive he shell, with a maximum range of 20.6 km miles, has been developed. Subsequent enhancements During the early 1990s all UK L118 were fitted with a muzzle velocity measuring device MVMD, a radar, and its power supply. In 2002 the British Army's L-118 guns completed replacement of their optical sights with the LINAPS artillery pointing system mounted above the barrel. This is a self-contained system that uses three ring laser gyros to determine azimuth, elevation angle and trunnion tilt angle. It also includes facilities for navigation and self-survey using a global positioning system, inertial direction measurement and distance measurement. All this can be used anywhere in the world to lay the gun without external references. The outputs and inputs for APS are through the touchscreen layers display and control unit LCDU that replaced the conventional dial sight and its mount. 
The LCDU enables the layer to lay the gun by moving the barrel until the LCDU displays no difference between the ordered firing data and where the barrel is pointing as determined by the LINAPS sensors. A capability enhancement program that started delivering improvements to UK guns in 2007 aimed at reducing weight and improving some components. Weight reduction measures include the replacement of some steel components by titanium, however, only some elements entered UK service. The MVMD is also more tightly coupled with the LCDU, reducing electrical power requirements. Around 2010, new direct fire sites for longer range use were introduced for service in Afghanistan. These comprise a sniper's telescopic site and a new night site. At the end of 2011, a new LCDU with a slightly larger touchscreen was ordered. It may enable data transfer from FCBISA and include the NATO Armament Ballistic Kernel for direct fire shooting. Variants. <laughs> 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 Topic L one hundred and nineteen. The L one hundred and nineteen variant has a different barrel, a slightly shorter L twenty ordnance with a percussion firing mechanism for firing the ubiquitous USM one type ammunition UK one hundred and five millimeters how, giving the gun a max range of eleven thousand four hundred meters, twelve thousand five hundred yards. In British service, the L-119 was used only for training at the Royal School of Artillery while stocks of 105mm how lasted, and the last British L-119s were retired in 2005. However, the L-119 is popular with many export customers who still rely on M-1 ammunition. Topic M one one nine. The L one hundred and nineteen was further modified and produced under license for the United States Army. The most recent version is the M one one nine A three, introduced in twenty thirteen with a digital fire control system and GPS aided inertial navigation unit using software derived from the M seven 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 A two. Topic Other variants. During the 1970s a third variant, with the L-21 ordnance, was developed and prototypes produced. This was for Switzerland and used Swiss pattern 105 mm ammunition. It did not enter service. The Indian 105 mm light field gun appears to share many features with the UK equipment. In the late 1960s India introduced the value-engineered Abbott variant with the 105mm FD ammunition, this led to the 105mm field gun India, which appears to have some light gun features in its elevating mass, although its platform is 25PR-like. The 105 mm light field gun is much more like L118, although somewhat heavier. In the 1990s, the gun was manufactured under license in Australia for the Australian and New Zealand armies using mostly Australian produced components. The Australian military call it the 
Hamel gun. Plans to produce 105 mm field ammunition were shelved. 105 mm saluting gun – The British Army has a number of dedicated saluting guns for ceremonial purposes. Based on the standard L118, these saluting guns are modified to exclusively fire blank cartridges, are not fitted with the APS system and are easily distinguished from the field gun variant by their distinctive bronze-green paintwork, chromed muzzle brake and breech. Operators. <laughs> 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 Topic: Current operators: Botswana, Brazil, Brunei, Ireland, both variants, Kenya, Malawi, Morocco, Nepal, New Zealand, Oman. Portugal Spain Switzerland Thailand United Arab Emirates United Kingdom United States Topic Former operators Australia all guns in reserve topic see also GIATLG1 howitzer topic notes and references Topic External Links Bay Website British Armed Forces Website FASL one hundred and eighteen web page